Sainam students, let's begin with the today's session. Class 8, Political Science. We are doing the revision of chapter number 2, that is Understanding Secularism. Today we are doing the second part of this chapter, the revision of Understanding Secularism. Let's go through the content here. What is secularism? Why is it important to separate religion from the state? These two topics we have covered in our first revision presentation, right? In our first video. Now, the second, remaining two topics, that is, what is Indian secularism and in what way is Indian secularism different from that of other democratic countries? That These two topics we are going to learn in this presentation. Now, what is Indian secularism? The very first thing, the Indian constitution mandates the Indian state to be secular. According to the constitution, only a secular state can realize its objectives to ensure the following. Now, let's go through the objectives. What are the objectives of a secular state? One religious community does not dominate another. I'll repeat again because these objectives are very important, children, for you to remember. Again, the first objective is one religious community does not dominate another. Then the second one in some members do not dominate other members of the same religious community. Some members do not dominate other members of the same religious community. Then the third objective is the state does not enforce any particular religion nor take away the religious freedom of individuals. Again, I'll repeat the third one. The state does not enforce any particular religion nor take away the religious freedom of individuals. Now, see the Indian state works in various ways to prevent the above domination, right? And to prevent any domination, the very first thing, like uh, the strategies that are adopted by the Indian states that has been given here, the strategies are, the first is distancing itself from one religion. And the second one is non-interference. And the third one is intervention. Now, children, these strategies we are going to understand in detail. Now, the very first strategy is distancing itself from one religion, right? See, the Indian state is not ruled by a religious group and nor does it support any one religion. In India, government spaces like law courts, police stations, government schools and offices are not supposed to display or promote any one religion. See, all these uh, law courts, police stations, they don't have that right to, to support any one religion, right? And even... Uh, if you remembered in that uh, while learning the chapter, I have told you about the story like government schools can cannot support any particular religion they, are, they cannot celebrate any particular religion of any one caste because uh, that is not that that permission is not given to the government school. So it is like one story was uh, told to you related to that uh, children were interested in celebrating Diwali in their school, in government school, but the sir, but their sir, they did not allow them. The principal did not allow them because he told them that government school allow, can celebrate only the public holiday, only the public fun, uh, festivals like uh, the 15th of August, 26th of January. All that national festivals can be celebrated, whereas a religious festival of any one religion cannot be celebrated. So, it is like government schools cannot promote any one religion, either in their morning prayers or through religious celebrations also. But this rule does not apply to private schools. Now, the second important topic is here, the non-interference, right? The second strategy. Now, what is that non-interference? See, Indian secularism works to prevent the above domination through a strategy of non-interference. This means that in order to respect the sentiments of all religions and not interfere with religious practices, the state makes certain exceptions 
for particular religious communities now let's understand this by an example if you remember children while learning our we uh, the chapter we have seen the example of uh, two friends one while driving the scooter one was wearing the helmet and another one was Oh, uh, Paramjit. He was without helmet, but he was not fined. Why? Because this is what he said. The Paramjit, the Sikh youth, he said, does not have to wear a helmet. Why? This is because the Indian state recognizes that wearing a pagri or turban is central to a Sikh's religious practice, and in order not to interfere with this, allows an exception in the law. then the third strategy is intervention now here intervention see indian secularism works to prevent the domination through a strategy of intervention now this is a good example where members of same religion that is upper caste hindus dominate other members that is some lower caste within it so in order to prevent in order to prevent this religion based exclusion and discrimination of lower caste the indian constitution bans untouchability now in this the state is intervening in religion in order to end a social practice that it believes discriminates and excludes and that violates the fundamental rights of lower caste of lower caste people those who are the citizens of the country right so in that way similarly these laws relating to equal inheritance law rights are respected the state may have to intervene in this way that is only included in interven uh, intervention that is state has the authority to intervene at some places where they feel like yes it is something based on the religion so it need to be interven uh, so the state has to say something in that way and can stop uh, the community by for doing that particular law or to follow that particular practice so the intervention of the state can also be in the form of support so the indian constitution grants the right to religious communities to set up their own schools and colleges now children let's understand this topic more clearly like the state may have to intervene in the religious based personal laws of communities right the intervention of the state can also be in the form of support it is not only to oppose someone but it may be in the form of support also the indian constitution grants the right to religious communities to set up their own schools and colleges it also gives them the financial aid or aid on a non preferential basis so the government the state has the power to intervene if that law is not up to the mark like if that law supports any one particular religion now the next topic in this we are going to learn is in what way is indian secularism different from that of other democratic countries now children before starting with the topic let's go through the slide here you can see the images of india as well as the map of india as well as the united states of america has been given to you yeah okay now the objectives is some of the above objectives are similar to those that have been included in the constitutions of secular democratic countries in other parts of the world now here the example has been taken The first amendment of the US Constitution prohibits the legislature from making laws whereas respecting an establishment of law or that prohibits the free exercise of religion now here see the legislature cannot declare the legislature cannot declare any religion as the official religion nor can they give preference to one religion so in the usa the separation between state and the religion means that neither the state nor religion can interfere in the affairs of one another 
I'll repeat. See, this is we are talking about the USA, okay? In the USA, the separation between the state and religion means that neither the state nor the religion can interfere in the affairs of one another. There is one significant way in which Indian secularism differs from the dominant understanding of secularism as practiced in the United States of America. Now, let's understand this how. This is because unlike the strict separation between religion and the state in American secularism, whereas in Indian secularism, though the state is not strictly separate from religion, it does not maintain a principled distance with religion. See, if we if compare with the American secularism, in Indian secularism, the state can intervene in religious affairs. The Indian constitution intervened in Hindu religious practices in order to abolish untouchability. So, in Indian secularism, though the state is not strictly separate from religion, it does maintain a principled distance with religion. This means that any interference in religion by the state has to be based on the ideals that are laid down in our constitution. So, the interference in religion by the state has to be based on some ideals. Ideals of what? That has been laid down in our Indian constitution. These ideals serve as the standard through which we can judge whether the state is or is not behaving according to secular principles. Now, here the Indian state is secular and works in various ways to prevent religious domination. So, the Indian constitution guarantees the fundamental rights. You all know very well about the fundamental rights, right? We have learned in your lower classes also. Freedom to freedom of equality, freedom of religion, freedom to, of speech. So, all these fundamental rights that are based on these secular principles. However, this is not to say that there is no violation of these rights in Indian society. Indeed, we can say such violations happen frequently, right? That we need a constitutional mechanism to prevent them from happening. So, the knowledge that such rights exist makes us sensitive to their violations and enables us to take action when these violations take place. See, it is as the here citizens of India that we have the right here. Whenever we see the violation of human rights is there, we can raise our voice there, right? We can go against that. So, children, here today we have completed with our chapter. We have completed a revision of our chapter, Understanding Secularism. There are two, point, two topics that we have covered in the today's section is what is Indian Secularism? And in what way is Indian secularism different from that of other democratic countries? So, in this, the most important thing, remember the three objectives of the secular state that we have learned. Go through that very well. Even the whole, if you want to do, go for the detailed study, see the videos that have been uploaded previously while teaching you the chapter. So, go through the slides of the revision as well as the previous videos also. So, see you in the next session with a new topic. Till then, take care.